Hello everyone, we will continue the another change request in the sales order report. And yes, we prepared the documentation part. Now we will start with the coding part. Now you all know the first thing we will create a transport request because we will consider this as a real project work and transport request is compulsory if we want to transport the objects to quality and production. And we cannot use the previous transport request as they are already released. So what I will do, I will go to SC09 transaction code and firstly we will create a transport request. Now, I will go to create button and I will create a workbench request. You all know, yes, workbench request is for workbench object, our table, program, all these are what workbench object. So I will give a meaningful description to the, to the transport request. Suppose I will write sales order report this is your change request to and yes suppose i will write the description also invalidate line items we will go for save whenever we will go for save system will generate a unique transport request number and this is our request number and this is the subtask under this main request. Now firstly we will start with the creation of the table because whenever we will click on to invalidate line items ultimately those line items will store into one custom table so we will create one table. And you all know, whenever we will create the table, the first word will be, first letter will be Z or Y. I will go to SC11 transaction code. And yes, you all know, whenever you are creating the table, the firstly you are creating the domains and data element. Now in our current requirement, yes, table has five columns sales document number line item number date time and user once i will proceed we will use the standard data elements itself so there is no need to create any domain and data element in our current requirement we will simply simply use the standard data elements itself and which has the domains now we all know we should follow the naming conventions which are given by the respective projects so i will see table name we have the naming convention zt relevant name so i will give zt suppose invalidate items so in this table we will store the invalidate line items i will go for create i will give the short description suppose i will give to store the invalidate line items of sales order report Now I will take the delivery class. I will take the delivery class as A only because we will store the transaction data here. See, whatever our sales order report is there, whatever the line items customer want to invalidate, ultimately that is transaction data. So we will store the transaction data into that table. Now I will go for display maintenance allowed. I will go for fields. 
Now you all know what will be the first column in that table. M A N D T. And M A N D T is the client number of the SAP system. Now, what will be the data element for M A N D T? It is M A N D T only. You all know very, very well these particular things. Now, what will be the first column in that table? Sales document number. And yes, what is the sales document number? VBELN. We will check from VBAK table itself. If I will go to SC11, VBAK. Sales document number is VBELN. And what is the data element? VBELN underscore VA. We will use simply. That's why I told you there is no need to create new domains and data elements. Now we will go for line item number of sales document number. And you all know line items are into which particular table? VBAP. So I will go for VBAP table. And the line item number is postcard. We will go for postnar itself. Now, what is the data element for postnar? It is postnar underscore VA. We will copy and paste. Now, we need to go for three additional columns. Now, what are those three additional columns? Date time and user system date system time system user so i will go for a particular structure and we will check everything from there itself you all know we have a system structure s y s t in this particular structure we have all the SAP system fields, whatever the system fields are there, date, time, user, sub RC, you all know you used so many system variables. So firstly, if I will go for date, you can see we will go for date. So we have that date, the data element is this itself. So we will use this data element. So I will write column name. Suppose column name is suppose date. And I will pass the data element of the date. Now we will go for time. We will check here. This is not time. This is time zone. This is, yes, this is the current time. So we will take this also. We'll take same to same time. Suppose I will write here time. And now we will go for the data element of the time. Now we will go for user system user find next yes username so i will write here user and this is the data element of the user which has a domain of character 12. so we used simply sap data elements itself now the most important part point especially for the freshers because it is now technical person responsibility to decide the primary keys of the table because functional don't know what will be the primary keys of the table you need to think at that point of time how many primary keys will be in that table you all know mndt primary key Sales document number is the primary key. Now you need to go for postnar also. Why, why postnar? Why we are going for composite key? Why we are going for two primary keys? Just see here. 
Just understand the requirement, you will get the answer automatically. If I will take only sales document number as the primary key, it means I cannot go for duplicate records of the order number. Now suppose think for order number 77, customer want to invalidate both the line item. 10 also, 20 also. Just think. If you have taken only sales document number as the primary key in your custom table, how, how you can store another record of sales document number? You cannot store. It means you need to take two primary keys so that we can go for 77, 10 also. We can go for 77, 20 also. So it is extremely important to understand how many primary keys will be there in the table. So we will take both as the primary keys. Anyways, date time user, we will not take as primary keys. I will go for technical settings. Yes. I will save into the package. Do not save as local object because this is just like a real project. So we will store into the package, same package. Have you seen? We have not created a new package at all. We will go for, okay, I'll check what is the package for sales order. This is the package for sales order report. I will check so that it should not go to another package. Okay, ZPKG underscore sales ORT. We'll go for save. System is prompting for transport request. We'll click on to own request and we will choose that transport request which we created just now. Okay. Now I will give the data class as we are going for transaction data story. So I will take a double P L one. Transaction data means whenever the user will invalidate, yes, the number of line items will increase into the table. I will take the size category as zero. We'll go for save. I'll go to back button. And yes, we will activate the table now. I will go for error. What is the error? Okay. It is saying date and user is a reserve word. It means I cannot use date and user. I have to just change some name and it's additional learning also. You cannot use date and user as it is a reserve word by SAP itself. Suppose I will write here S date, S time and S user. I change for time also. Anyways, for time, it has not given the error. Yes. Now the table is in the active state. So what is the summary of the video? In this video, firstly, we created a transport request. Why? Because previous transport requests are released and we cannot use the release transport request. We have not created a new package. We use the existing package and we created the table through SC11 transaction code. We took both VBELN and POSNAR as the primary key. Yes, because we were because for a sales order number. Yes, it might be the case. We are invalidating multiple line items. So if we want to store duplicate records of a line for a, for a sales order number, both should be the primary key. And yes, we are treating this as that it will store the transaction data. Now, last important point, which I forgot to tell, and maximum people will ask, why, why you have not generated the table maintenance generator? See, in this table, we are not maintaining data through SM30. 
our program will insert that data to this table. So why we should go for table maintenance generator and maintain that data into the table? Our program will insert that data into this table. And that's why I choose the delivery class as AA. It will store the transaction data. And who will put that transaction data? Our sales order report will put that transaction data. We will not maintain that data through SM30 transaction code. In the next video, we will start with the coding part. So that's it in this video. Thank you.